Micronesia since 1938. Matson celebrating 25 years of commitment to Guam, Micronesia, and the CNMI. Cars Plus Hyundai, home of the Kona Electric Vehicle, an electric heart with an SUV soul. Test drive yours today at Cars Plus. McDonald's of Guam, I'm loving it, and King's Restaurant, serving your local breakfast, lunch, and dinner favorites for over 45 years. Ahead on primetime, the latest with the search of two missing fishermen in Inalahan. A utility employee is accused of stealing from GPA and GWA. And an administrative complaint launched into a GPD officer accused of assault. These stories and more right here, right now on primetime. Hoffa day and good evening everyone. I'm Hannah Devonzo and thanks for tuning in to your news leader. It's day three of the search of two fishermen that were swept off the reef in Inalahan, and today's emergency responders found a body. Tyler Matanani has tonight's top story. It's been an all hands on deck search for the two fishermen that were swept off the reef of Nomia Beach shortly after 6.30 p.m. Saturday. Local and federal emergency responders conducted multiple air, land and sea searches from Bear Rock all the way down to Talafofo Bay in the hopes of finding the two men aged 24 and 28. Before 9 o'clock Monday morning, responders found a body. GFD spokesperson Kevin Riley. It was transported to the morgue uh, for positive identification by family members. The U.S. Coast Guard, the Navy, and a drone from Aviation Concepts also aided in the efforts. And as if looking in the ocean wasn't already difficult, the weather over the past few days has made the search an even greater challenge, while also posing safety concerns. The seas are extremely hazardous today, as well as they were yesterday, um, even more, more dangerous today. Uh, the high surf and the high winds are, are proving very difficult for our units to get in close to the reef uh, where we suspect the other missing fishermen would be. The search continues for the second fisherman. In the meantime, Riley reminds the community to remain vigilant of their surroundings and conditions when out in the waters. Know your limitations. Always go with the buddy. Um, and of course, you know, uh, just practice safety, safety, safety. We can't stress that enough. KUAM visited the command post in Inarahan earlier and saw several family members gathered under canopies, watching, waiting, and praying for their loved one. Mayor Daniel Sanchez was found dead and Rudy Canata's home with stab wounds. Now Canata is on day three of trial in Superior Court. 23 stab wounds were found on the body of the former Humatak mayor, Daniel Sanchez. Yet Rudy Kanata's DNA wasn't detected on the murder weapons, which were a hammer and scissors. Taking the stand today was Guam Police Department's fingerprint examiner, Gilbert Montia. Did you uh, locate any, any fingerprints? Uh, no, sir. He claims due to the hammer being rusty, it made it difficult to lift any usable fingerprints. However, the scissors had a partial print. He did not have enough uh, rich characteristics for identification purposes. With no fingerprints detected on the hammer and an unusable print on the scissors, their findings were limited. I was able to recover um, suspected hair fibers from the uh, head of the hammer itself. Also taking the stand this morning was a relative of Kanata, Maurice Powell. He alleged that Kanata frantically knocked on his door shirtless on the morning of April 3rd. Kanata allegedly said it was an emergency and needed money from him. This was also the day Sanchez was found dead in Kanata's residence. Trial will continue on Tuesday morning in Superior Court. A Facebook user by the name of I am going to assassinate you has prompted authorities to step in. The user left comments during a proclamation signing on Governor Lou Leon Guerrero's Facebook Live on Friday. One of them saying, I just got hacked, this stupid thing. Governor Leon Guerrero's Director of Communications, Crystal Paco San Augustin, commented that cybersecurity is a serious concern and that the matter is under investigation by both local and federal authorities. Meanwhile, GPD spokesperson Berlin Sevilla issued the following comments saying, any and all threats made to the governor, lieutenant governor, and their families are not taken lightly and are looked into the matter to ensure their safety. All credible sources are looked into, vetted, and investigated. 
A violent attack in Martinez Kitchenette leaves the owner shaken up and one man under arrest. In the early morning of March 20, Guam Police Department officers responded to an assault complaint at the Dededo restaurant. 42-year-old Pat Lee Fossey and his significant other, whom are both known to the victim, approached him out of the darkness at the back of the restaurant and assaulted him, causing a swollen arm and several abrasions on his leg. Court documents state that after being pushed down, the victim says he lost sight of Fossey and the female who ran, after, ran off after the attack. Fossey was charged with one count of assault and a misdemeanor. The reason for the assault is unknown. Mark Nalikat, a.k.a. Cheese Bread, was arrested and charged for beating a man at the Dededo Skate Park more than a year ago. The incident occurred last February, but police only recently found him last week. He's also believed to be involved in the recent riot at the park that left three people injured. According to court documents, in February of 2021, Nalikat attacked a man hitting the victim in the face, head and legs, and even used a skateboard in the assault. The victim had to be taken to GMH. Witnesses says that it appeared the attack was unprovoked. The Lee Cat, however, said the victim always talks bad and allegedly did it for the kids. The Lee Cat or cheese bread faces charges of aggravated assault. An employee is accused of stealing nearly $12,000 from GPA and GWA, and law enforcement authorities are now conducting a criminal investigation. According to a joint news release, an unnamed employee was discovered manipulating cash payments from utilities accounts to hide stolen cash and has since been fired. The alleged crime was discovered through internal investigative measures and was reported to GPD. The agency said they have a zero tolerance policy regarding theft and intend to seek justice to the full extent of the law. They also wanted to reassure customers that making utility payments through the various available options remain safe and secure. As it remains an active investigation, GPA and GWA will have no further comment regarding the incident. The Guam, De Guam Police Department is releasing very little details about a criminal complaint filed against a police officer. According to a press release, an assault complaint was filed on Saturday, March 19th, after 2 o'clock in the afternoon in the, in the Tamuning area. The chief of police was notified and an officer was placed on administrative leave. No other information was provided in the case. NMI Lieutenant Governor Arnold Palacios is calling into question the entire impeachment trial in the Senate weeks before it even begins. Sunday night, Palacios re released a statement that says transparency continues to be an issue. His response comes days after it was revealed that Governor Ralph Torres' personal attorney, Viola Alipuyo, edited and reviewed the impeachment rules well before the public did. It's unclear if Alipuyo will continue to serve as Torres' personal legal counsel. Meanwhile, like Vice Speaker B.J. Atau has declined the role of impeachment se prosecutor, which means the Senate President will now hand Senate, a select, select a lawmaker to prosecute the case, according to the impeachment rules now under scrutiny. House Speaker Edmund Villagomez rejected the role last week, citing violations of the Constitution. Additionally, Lieutenant Governor Arnold Palacios, who is running for governor as an independent, continues to call for a fair and balanced trial. KUAM has reached out to Senate President Jude Hofschneider and Ali Puyo for comment. Over in the NMI, 4.9 pounds of crystal meth was found at a local post office on Saipan by customs officers over the weekend. Customs Director Jose Mafnas briefed media on the matter earlier today. Mafna says the individual is a Chinese national and the package was headed to a private post office from the Chalan Kanoa on Saturday. The drugs were intercepted during a routine customs inspection. He says meth sells for $400 to $500 per gram on the streets of Saipan. Still to come on your news leader, the Island Senior Center preps to reopen. And still to come, Tomas Manglutnia kicks off his five-part series, Pandemic at Work. These stories and more when your news leader returns. Get up to the minute news, plus access to alerts, streaming radio, promotions, and more on your mobile device by downloading the KUAM News mobile app, available at the App Store now. Don't need to work, babe, keep the smile on your face The moments you can't replay And I'll be around
wherever life takes you, we're always here for you. Calvo's Insurance. Count on us for life. My sourdough patty melt has 100% beef, two melty cheeses, and grilled onions, all between two slices of my famous toasted sourdough bread. It's pretty much the greatest thing since itself. My sourdough patty melt combos. Order on the Jack app today. It's beautiful. It is, right, baby? Dad, isn't that where we usually stop for gas? It's where we used to stop, but not anymore. But isn't that the place with the milkshakes? Okay, all right, all right, let's go. Get it out, kids. <laughs> Take your adventure further in the first ever Santa Fe Hybrid. At the start of the pandemic, being the only provider in my household, I was so worried that I didn't know what to do. I didn't know how to pay my bills. I still work, but it was short hours, like only two hours, three hours a day, and that didn't really cut it. I wasn't really thinking about getting any type of federal assistance. I got PUA and I got seniors, and it's helped a lot. It really means a lot to us. It really took a lot of burdens off my shoulders. It really helped me to provide for my family and put food on the table, and it really came at my time of need. Yeah, I kind of dropped your worries down because everything was less stress. I was um, able to stay at home with my son and not worry about having to work during the pandemic. Thank you for the federal fund. Thank you for the unemployment assistance. Thank you so much for the pandemic unemployment assistance. If you have any questions, please contact your congressman's office. This ad was paid for with official funds from the office of Congressman Michael F.Q. San Nicolas. Let us know what's up on our KOM News WhatsApp tip line at 671-727-0094. Share information about what's happening in your town on Guam or the CNMI and what you want us to know. Reach us on WhatsApp at 671-727-0094. Child care assistance programs will be getting a whopping $81.5 million boost through a new executive order signed by Governor Lou Leon Guerrero. Nestor Lacanto reports. The newly established Programa in Penilan, or the Watchover Program, provides an additional $80 plus million for child care. Added to the $20 million previously allocated by the administration, it pushes the total funding to more than $100 million for child care services. Guida will be managing the program, and CEO and Administrator Melanie Mandiola says they'll be tapping into American Rescue Plan and other federal funding sources. So the governor has multiple programs. Uh, these programs address, um, they're direct to, our, um, direct to our people. Our first program is uh, part of the Child Care Development Block Grant Program. And then there's certain uh, follow-up programs. There's some for after-school care, um, as well as for our nonprofits, our mayor's offices who may want to run summer camp programs. In particular, the program also expands eligibility to traditional child care providers, such as family members, in what's called relative care. Right now, if you go to a grandma or an auntie, and um, you can kind of you can pay them, or you know, give them a little, kick them a little cash here and there. What this is looking to do is to um, do a fast track type of certification for them to operate uh, essentially a home daycare. This is going to be the most complex to, to roll out. Um, and uh, so some preliminary plans that we have is that it's, it's multi-pronged. The first thing is that um, from, the, from the perspective of the caretaker, the caretaker would go through some training, um, some licensing, and they would be able to receive payment of any kind. Mendiola says across the country, child care has been identified as a critical basic need with gaps that need to be filled to help recover from the pandemic. Now, it is a lot of money, and so that's, uh, that's why we're trying to uh, be very flexible and very creative about creating these different programs. So we want to go ahead and continue to, pro to uh, provide for our daycares. Um, but as the executive order stated, the daycare uh, currently supports 6% of our daycare-aged uh, child, or the, the daycare population. And so what we're really trying to do is engage uh, the rest of the population um, and uh, who may be, who may not be, um, maybe, maybe we're relying a little too much and straining other members of our family we shouldn't be straining. For KOM News, I'm Nestor Lacanto. For more information, check out the Gita website, investguam.com or publichealthguamchildcare.com. From our island's children to our island's Manumku, the Mayor's Council of Guam has decided on an official day to reopen the island's senior centers. All of them will be open on the same day in May. 
According to MCOG President PD Mayor Jesse Alleg, the reason it was decided to reopen in two months was because it coincides with Manumku month and because the Manilao Senior Center is still being used as a clinic for the monoclonal antibody treatment. It's unfortunate because you know how it is, fair is fair, right? Why, how do you make one, one a senior start over the other and how do you prepare to accommodate the, the senior from Manila and from Border Town Pago at another location when, uh, you know, it'll only be for a couple of weeks or a few weeks. Village senior centers are scheduled to reopen on May 2nd. The NMI Democrat Party Nola Hicks is saying a joke to her position as chairwoman. Hicks confirmed to KUAM last night that she is leaving the party's leadership. It's unclear why she's leaving her role in the Democratic Party during its most pivotal time. Media has been told to wait for a press release. Hicks has led the party in its renewed presence in the NMI, having been a strong critic of Governor Ralph Torres and helping secure a seat in the November special election for the House of Representatives. KUAM has confirmed Jonathan Cabrera will be the, N the new NMI Democratic Party chair. In his first segment of a new five-part series, Tomas Manglutnia takes a closer look at the pandemic at work, speaking to residents across industries about how COVID has changed everything. Restaurants were in free fall most of this pandemic. Episodic closures and rapidly changing guidelines complicating what's on the menu for those in the service industry. We joined Ruby Tuesdays at their table a few weeks ago. When CDC changed the guidelines with a five-day uh, quarantine or, or isolation, that kind of helped us for not being closed for so long. At one point, so many staff were out, they could only do curbside service. But their staff with a near-perfect vaccination rate continue to be cautious amid all the changes. Even if they come into shift and they're feeling good, and then later on they say they feel something, we send them home right away, you know, just to protect everybody else that's in this building. They've also been able to turn the table when it comes to hiring. As the nation sees what's called the great resignation of people leaving their jobs they started before the pandemic, Ruby Tuesdays is seeing their fair share of the lunch rush. But right now we don't see any shortages. Right now people are fighting for shifts. They want those hours. As dollars are stretched, so are the demands of the job. Um, it's, it's tiring to make sure we keep up with it, but it's also rewarding uh, at the end of the day too. Tomas Manglotnia for KOM News. Kicking off the celebration of 70 years of transforming lives and advancing communities, the Office of the Governor declared March 31st and March of 2022 as the University of Guam's Charter Day and Charter Month. Proud UOG alumni Lieutenant Governor Joshua Tonario highlighted one of the many achievements at the university in the last seven decades during Friday morning's virtual proclamation signing. This graduation year upcoming in uh, in uh, May or June, um, you're going to have administered more than 20,000 degrees uh, to the people of Guam and Micronesia. This, um, this accomplishment really has laid the foundation for the economic and social development of the entire region. Uh, and I want to thank you for your partnership uh, with not only the government of Guam, but all of the governments throughout Micronesia. Governor Lou Leon Guerrero commends UOG students, alumni, faculty, staff, administration, and boards of the region of their many achievements throughout their rich history. For the next two weeks, UOG's Charter Day celebrations will continue with three in-person community festivals and the annual Chamorro Language Competition for K-12 students, which will be live-streamed. And starting tomorrow, our Jason Salas begins a seven-part series on UOG's 54th Charter Day celebration, Transforming Lives, Advancing Communities. And up next, we have...
do you want some milk? Do you ever wonder how your favorite products make their way into your local stores? Most arrive on state-of-the-art mats and vessels that transport containers of food, household items, equipment and supplies into the islands every week. Because we know that you depend on us, we work closely with our partners to ensure that our shipments arrive on time, all the time, so you can find your favorite products when you need them. We transport the region's most precious cargo that supports successful businesses and promotes a better quality of life for our families. Matson is proud to have been the hometown shipping carrier for Guam, the CNMI, and Micronesia for the past 25 years. And you can count on us to be here for generations to come. Guam is truly a majestic place with its sheer natural beauty, wealth of beaches, and culturally rich landscape. Unfortunately, Guam has a real problem with unwanted invasive species. Help us in preventing their introduction and spread. The coconut rhinoceros beetle, the little fire ant, the African snail, Siam weed. These are just a few of the numerous invasives on Guam. Follow proper custom procedures when bringing plants and animals into Guam. Help protect Guam. Tell your family and friends about invasive species. To report invasive species, call 475-PEST. The new season just dropped. Enter the big dinner box from Pizza Hut. Two pizzas, breadsticks, and wings all in one box. You'll run out of episodes before you run out of food. The big dinner box, only from Pizza Hut. No one out pizzas the hut. UAM Sports is brought to you by Docomo Pacific. Better together. What's up, Guam? Dave Delgado here for KUAM Sports. Thanks for watching. I'll get to some bowling results from the Central Lanes Bowling Center in just a bit. But first off, some youth baseball highlights from the Ukudu Field. Check it out. 76 Pony Middle School Baseball League from the Ukudu Field. Playoffs between the Astumbo Dragons and Inarahan Warriors. Go three, go three. Astumbo's Ethan Bombo with the triple sliding into third base. Bomba would steal home to give the Dragons the 1-0 lead. Bomba called safe by the plate umpire. Strike out here by pitcher Josiah Cruz. Ball gets away from the catcher. Bad throw to third, trying to get the base runner from advancing home. Throw goes over the third baseman's head. Shra Sigra comes home to score. Keone Pakaigui reaches third safely. Astumbo went on to win the game 14-2 to advance to this year's championship game. Dragons catcher Xavier Cruz was selected as the player of the game, going one for two with three runs and two RBIs. Meeting the Dragons in the title game will be the FB Leon Guerrero Hawks after they defeated the Inarahan Warriors 1 by a score of 13 to 3. Player of the game, Hawks catcher Kanoa Cepeda, four for four at the plate with three RBIs. Hawks shortstop Peter Conception also went four for four with three runs and an RBI. Championship game for the 2022 76 Pony Middle School Baseball League will be held this Saturday, March 26th at 1 in the afternoon. In bowling news, after opening with a four-bagger, RJ Santos calmly delivered three pocket strikes to close out the final match and claim the March edition of the King of the Lanes against top seed Manny Tagle. In the Prince of the Lanes contest, third seed Mike Brown marched to the title outlasting fifth seed Gomez Martinez to earn his first Prince of the Lanes title ever. Shout out to the homie Mike Brown. The next King and Prince of the Lanes will be held on Sunday, April 10th at 1.15 in the afternoon at the Central Lanes Bowling Center. KUAM Sports is brought to you by Docomo Pacific. Better together. Need a new phone? Trade in now and get up to $500 off our best 5G devices. Trade in your older phone in any condition and step up to better savings and speeds only our 5G network can provide. Check out our website and catch up on the best mobile experience. Trade in now. Docomo Pacific, better together. Say hello to the first Hawaiian Bank mobile app. Got a question about your finances? you've come to the right place. Bring all your accounts together, even those that aren't with us, and see the big picture, right down to the smallest detail. 
unlock powerful tools like Insights and Money Map that help you save time and take control of your finances. When you connect accounts with the First Hawaiian Bank mobile app, it all starts with yes. March is Women's History Month, and every Monday we'll be introducing you to a woman leader in our community who inspires, motivates, and is driven. Tonight we introduce you to the island's first female Army Ranger who completed one of the toughest training courses in the Army. Joan Ogventarfis has more. Women Driven is brought to you locally by Bank of Guam, the People's Bank. She may be small in stature, standing at just five feet, but don't let Captain Ann Charferis fool you. The 29-year-old daughter of George and Diana Charferis recently completed Ranger School in Fort Benning, Georgia. Charferis was the only female out of 120 students to receive the coveted Ranger tab, the 100th female since the Army opened the course to females in 2015, and is Guam's first female Army Ranger. The 62-day grueling course is divided into three phases that challenge students mentally and physically, the Benning phase, mountain phase, and swamp phase, aimed to develop functional skills directly related to engaging the enemy in close combat and direct fire battle. She endured 20 hours of training per day on a 2200 calorie diet of MREs and little to no hours of sleep. Some physical demands include carrying 100 pounds of weapons, equipment, and training ammunition while patrolling more than 10 miles. It was tough, but um, sometimes I had to, to uh, remind myself I was like, okay, I came to this school um, and I wanted to challenge myself. I wanted to put myself in an uncomfortable position. And the fact that I'm there with guys that are like twice my size and I'm doing the same thing they're doing, like that was what I, I used to inspire myself. I was like, Eddie, if you can get through this, like anybody can do it. I was using a, like the, the sun, sunk cost fallacy where it's like, I made it this far, like I, I invested so much in this whole thing, like just to be here in the school. I had to prepare a whole bunch before, before I went to the school. I had to make it through all these gates, like physical gates. I had to uh, get through so many like uh, pre-ranger school courses. And so um, I told myself like, gosh, I did all that. Like, can't stop now, I have to, I have to finish it. She admits the mountain phase, which is considered the hardest, proved difficult for her. She had to retake that portion a few times. When I didn't make it through the first time, I was like telling myself, I was like, man, I'm a failure. And I was like, what, why, like, what are people gonna think? They put like, they expected me to pass the school. I, I like invested so much in it and I was like, I don't want to go back. I don't want to go back home and then go back to my unit. And they're like, oh, darn, like she didn't make it through. My mantra was like, you're only a failure if you quit. So I just, um, it just doesn't matter how many attempts, how many times, it, I it kind of like, yeah, it's a, it's kind of cliche, but like you fall off the horse, you get back on. Her determination is inspiring and will hopefully open doors and opportunities for the island females. For Charfris, what does it mean to be a woman driven? You're bettering yourself so that you're an inspiration for others and whatever that may, whatever it is that you're passionate about, um, I say just, you, you just dream big and then you just, you just full send, just send it. Reporting for KUAM News, I'm Jonathan Charfris. Women Driven is brought to you locally by Bank of Guam, the People's Bank. And welcome back. We wrap up the show with your birthday shout outs. Here's Jason Solis. Happy birthday to Mr. Juan Uggen. Senor Juan, happy 74th birthday to you. Your family says we love you to the moon and back and please have the most wonderful day. Your entire family is wishing you all the best, sir. But most especially, your beloved daughter, Joan. Sir, Mr. Juan, Uncle Juan, Senor Juan, we wish you the very happiest birthday ever. Happy 74th birthday to Juan Uggen. 
You can be a part of our Cold Stone Creamery Birthday Club by checking out KUAM.com. And tonight we feature Bank Pacific.